Good evening, and welcome to St. Petrino. Today we celebrate the 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our celebrant for this Mass is Father Thomas Meloda, our pastor. And our processional hymn may be found in the hymnal, number 842, Diverse in Culture, Nation, Race, number 842. Please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we gather and give thanks to the Lord for all the many blessings he has given to us, let us prepare room in our hearts, calling to mind the times we have sinned, and asking the forgiveness of our loving Father in heaven. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Kyrie eleison. You came to call sinners, Christ eleison. Christ eleison. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Kiri eleison. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Oh, 
Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, say to those whose hearts are frightened, be strong, fear not. Here is your God. He comes with vindication. With divine recompense, he comes to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened, the ears of the deaf be cleared. Then will the lame leap like a stag, then the tongue of the mute will sing. Streams will burst forth in the desert and rivers in the steppe. The burning sands will become pools and the thirsty ground springs of water. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. James. My brothers and sisters, show no partiality as you adhere to the faith in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ. For if a man with gold rings and fine clothes comes into your assembly, and a poor person in shabby clothes also comes in, and you pay attention to the one wearing the fine clothes and say, sit here please, while you say to the poor one, stand there or sit at my feet, have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil designs? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, did not God choose those who are poor in the world to be rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom that he promised to those who love him? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Again Jesus left the district of Tyre and went by way of Sidon to the Sea of Galilee into the district of the Decapolis. And people brought to him a deaf man who had a speech impediment and begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him off by himself away from the crowd. He put his finger into the man's ears and spitting touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven and groaned and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately the man's ears were opened, his speech impediment was removed, and he spoke plainly. He ordered them not to tell anyone. But the more he ordered them not to, the more they proclaimed it. They were exceedingly astonished, and they said, He has done all things well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Not long ago, Pope Francis made a pastoral visit to a high school and encouraged a young woman who had suffered bullying earlier in her life for a skin condition affecting the way she looked. The young woman named Gloria loved to sing and sing in church in particular. So the Pope asked if she would honor him by singing a song. So she did. Gloria sang for the Pope. That's what I thought. So the song she sang rejoiced in the loving embrace and constant help of the Blessed Mother and her son. Then Gloria asked the Pope a question. What do you want from young people? What should young people do today? The Pope responded, that he did not want them, young people, to be alone. 
Although the Pope's answer is beautiful and thoughtful, his response seems to imply that we, you and I, have at least some ability to decide not to be alone. That loneliness is not something that is foist upon us, but something that we can change. That this is not the way we usually certainly think of loneliness. So what did the Pope mean? Well, although the man born deaf and with a speech impediment lived in a silent world in which he was not able clearly to communicate with others or others with him, he was not alone. The man born blind was clearly loved, for a crowd of people brought him to the Lord and begged Jesus to help him. No? But still, it was not only the way the man, it was not only the crowd that made the man not alone. Notice that the crowd did not beg Jesus to cure the man born deaf. No, the crowd begged Jesus to lay his hand on the man. They didn't say to him, please cure this man. They said, please, Lord, lay your hand upon him. They did not actually ask Jesus to take away his deafness and his speech impediment. They asked Jesus to touch the man, just touch him. It would seem that the crowd recognized that there was something in the man that needed a cure which ran deeper than deafness or the inability to speak. It is significant that Jesus honors the crowd's request by taking the man away from the crowd. I imagine our Lord placing his arm around the man born deaf and walking away from the crowd. Then, after taking him away from the crowd, our Lord does touch him. He places his fingers in the man's ears and then touches his tongue. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't usually go around putting my fingers in people's ears and then touching their tongue, even before COVID. Too soon? Too soon. Okay. But the point being, this is a very personal thing, right? You don't just touch anybody's ears and their tongue. Even more so, notice Jesus does not perform a magic trick. He is not making a show. On the contrary, Jesus makes certain that no one sees what he's doing. The point here is that Jesus' miracle is not for dramatic effect. This is Jesus loving the man in a concrete and personal way. So now we may think the story ends here, huh? The man is cured and everyone spoke well of Jesus. But there's more to the story. Although Jesus clearly demonstrates that the man born blind, that, that the man, deaf man is not alone, he also demonstrates that he, Jesus Christ, is not alone. Did you notice before Jesus cures the man, he looks up to heaven? As Jesus was about to cure the man who was deaf and mute, he looked up to heaven. Hence the reason why Jesus took the man away from the crowd. A simple gesture we would miss if we weren't paying attention. Jesus Christ, too, is not alone. This glance to heaven reminds us that he is the second person of the Holy Trinity. His Father and the Holy Spirit are also there, and they are one. In fact, our church teaches that when one person of the Holy Trinity acts ad extra, that is, out into the world, all three act together. It is not only Christ curing, but also the Father and the Holy Spirit. We experience this every time we come to Mass. The prayers of our liturgy are directed to the Father through the Son in the power of the Holy Spirit. Notice the times when the priest looks up to heaven, the opening prayer at Mass, the elevation of the host, the Our Father. All throughout the liturgy, the priest doesn't look at the crowd. He looks somewhere else. No offense. He's not praying to you. He's praying to the Lord. The man born deaf, then, 
is not receiving simply the love of a human being. He's receiving in a concrete, tangible, and real way the love of Almighty God. Our Lord performs this miraculous cure, demonstrating his physical presence in touching the man and uttering the groan, Ephatha, as the power goes out from him. But it is the divine presence that effects the cure. Where else in our lives do we receive such a concrete experience of the divine love? Adrian von Speyer makes the connection between the body of our Lord touching the man born deaf, communicating the divine presence, and the most holy Eucharist in which Christ touches our tongue. We have the entire mystery here in this passage of Scripture. The crowd bringing the man who cannot hear and cannot speak clearly. Jesus Christ truly loving the man in his human and divine nature. The man himself allowing his ears to be opened and his mouth to proclaim the praise of God. Notice, the crowd demonstrated their love for this man. But Christ's love for the man is not limited to the action of the crowd. The crowd brings the man to Christ, but Christ's love exceeds that even of the crowd. So one last point. The crowd is not alone. That may seem funny to say. But isn't it interesting that the Bible does not record any words of the man who was cured. Although the evangelist informs us that the man could speak clearly, St. Mark records only the words of the crowd. He does all things well, they say. It seems that the man's words are proclaimed by the crowd, and the voice of the multitude is Christ's voice speaking in them. Christ dwells in them. So now enter you and me. We too are not alone. The story of the crown does not end with that crowd of 2,000 years ago. It is also this crowd right here and now. What would happen? What kind of world would we have? What kind of community if our words were the words of Christ? Always. What if our every voice and our every action proclaim the truth that Christ does all things well? First, we would know that we are not alone. We are never alone, but there are concrete moments when Christ touches us, in fact, unites himself with us. These are the sacraments, especially the Eucharist. Second, there are times when we open our ears and open our mouths to acknowledge this union and seek to deepen it. This is our prayer. Third, we become the crowd who brings others who cannot hear and find it difficult to speak, begging our Lord to lay his hands on them, bringing others to the Lord. The Holy Father, Pope Francis, following our Lord's example, made it very clear what he meant by his exhortation that young people not be alone in their lives. He told Gloria to allow Christ and the Blessed Mother to embrace her always. When we listen and know that Christ and his mother are always there embracing us and truly loving us, the fear dissipates and we cannot help but speak. If we believe this, then we cannot remain deaf to Christ's word nor mute in proclaiming it. Are we the crowd? that brings one who cannot hear to the Lord? Or are we the one who retreats, stays to the rear, and remains silent? This is the difference in our Catholic faith. We speak not because there is a word to proclaim, but because Christ has truly and concretely come to dwell within us through the sacraments. We have heard his word, and we have received him who touched the man's ears and tongue so that he might speak. Catholicism is the faith of the real and the concrete, the human and divine united. The Pope's response to Gloria's question was right. We do have the ability to decide not to be alone. 
because the one who loves us most is always standing right there with us, waiting for us to invite him into our lives, to embrace us, listen to us, and love us. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds in the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With faith and hope in the love of our Heavenly Father, we turn to him with these prayers and petitions. That God's salvation may reach to the ends of the earth through the ministry of the church, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. That the actions of all those who govern and legislate will imitate the Lord, who is just in all his ways. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our nation on Labor Day, that our work will be directed to God's glory, and that the unemployed will obtain suitable work. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to terrorism, and for the conversion of all those who are given to violence and hatred, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those affected by the recent hurricanes, that they may be strengthened and consoled by the grace of God, and that we may readily assist them with our resources and prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick in body, mind, or spirit, that they may know the Lord's merciful love and quickly regain their health, especially for Michelle McGovern. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they may receive the reward of their labors, especially for George Carr and Jeff McLearn. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of this mass, Carol and Elmer Bandy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you grant all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Our offertory hymn is found in the Red Worship Hymnals at number 707. I heard the voice of Jesus say, number 707.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, the Lord of all his holy church. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly really right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that, by sinning, we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore o lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your son our lord jesus christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For in the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he sent the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of The mystery of Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and, recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Petronel, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, 
advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Benedict, our Pope Emeritus, and Ronald, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you with their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. to the Father and to the Son and to 
Draw. 
Let us pray. <clears throat> Grant that you are faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. We have a number of announcements this evening. Mass on Labor Day, Monday, September 6th, will be at 9 a.m. only. The parish offices will be closed on Monday. Please join us for the Lexio Eucharist 10-week video series featuring Dr. Brant Peter on Monday mornings, in person only, from 9.30 to 11 a.m., starting September 13th in the PLC door number two. Please come as often as you like and bring your Bible. If interested, study guides will be available for purchase at the first season. Training for young persons in grades five through eight who are interested in being an altar server will begin September 20th. Registration in advance is strongly recommended and two training sessions are required. All parishioners are invited to join us next Saturday, September 11th for the 5 p.m. Mass in honor of the 50th anniversary of ordination of Father John Palmer, who has assisted us on weekends here at St. Petronell for many years. There will be a reception in the parish life following the Mass, including a free dinner. Yeah, I'm coming. Please take a moment to wish Father Palmer congratulations and to thank him for his service to our parish. Please see today's bulletin for more information and the priests, deacons, and staff at St. Patronel wish you a very blessed and safe Labor Day weekend. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our recessional hymn is found in the Red Worship Hymnals at number 650, Amazing Grace, number 650. It's great.